Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. In this video we're going to learn how to model this corkscrew. We're going to use a helix spline and a cylinder. So let's get started. But before we start, let's go to Customize, Unit Setup, and here under Display Unit Scale, we're going to set it to Generic Units. Then press OK. We'll create our handle first. To do that, we're going to use a cylinder. We'll go over to the Create Panel, Geometry, Standard Primitives, and select Cylinder. Now here in the left viewport, we'll just drag out a cylinder. Don't worry about the size. We'll go over to the Modify Panel, and in Radius, we're going to just type in 20. Height, we'll type in 200. Height segments, we're going to leave at 5. Cap segments, we'll also leave at 1. And the sides, we're going to leave at 18. We can right-click and convert to an editable poly. Just move that there in the center. I'm going to turn on Edged Faces in the Perspective viewport. Just press F4 on the keyboard, or you can right-click on Realistic and choose Edge Faces. We're going to select Polygon Mode and select all the center polygons. Now go over to Edit Geometry and press Detach. Here in the Detach dialog we're going to check Detach as Clone. You can write in a name if you like, I'm just going to leave it as it is, Object 1, and then OK. We've just created a separate object. We're going to connect that later on to our corkscrew. Let's carry on editing our, um, our handle. We'll go to Edge Mode and we're going to select these edge edges. Connect. We want one segment and we want to slide it along to the left side. We're going to slide it along to something like 95. Then OK. We'll do the same on the right side. Select the edges, connect, and this time it's going to be negative. It'll be negative 95, then OK. Now we want to select the end polygons. We'll go into polygon mode, select this polygon. Now holding the control key down, we'll select the other one. We'll go over to edit polygons, click on the small settings box for inset, and in set amount, we're going to set it 1, then OK. That's our handle finished. Let's carry on creating the, the centerpiece. We'll go to the main toolbar, select by name. We'll choose the object, then OK. Now over in the editable poly, we'll select the polygon mode and extrude. Now here in the small settings box, we're going to set the extrude to local normal. And we're just going to type an amount about, just say 2, then OK. Now we'll go to Edge Mode. We'll just zoom in a wee bit. We're going to select one of these edges, hold the Control key down, and we'll select the one straight underneath. Then Loop, and we're going to add a chamfer. We'll just type in in chamfer amount 0.5. And in Segments, 2. We're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Now we're going to create some more edges down the centre. Here in the front viewport, we'll select Edges, Connect. Now we're going to say two segments, and this time we're going to use the pinch and we're going to drag them apart. Let's drag them apart to 95 and say OK. We want to create a hole right in the center, so we need to add a bit more topology. So let's select all the edges again, connect, put that back to zero, put pinch back to zero, and we're going to say five segments, then OK. Now we'll go to polygon mode, and we'll select these polygons here. Hold the control key down and we'll select these four polygons. We'll 
we'll go over to inset we'll just leave the amount set at one and say OK hold the control key down and press vertex we're going to weld all the vertices together so we'll click on the small settings box for weld we'll bring the threshold up until we can see they're all welded together we're just left with one vertex then we'll say OK now we're going to add a chamfer to that vertex chamfer amount something like 5 then say OK press Alt W to maximize the viewport now we'll go to edge mode and select this edge then we'll go over and we'll press ring and then connect bring the segments down to 1 and we can slide the slide as close as we can to the edge say something like 95 then OK Let's select Polygon and now we'll extrude. We're going to extrude minus a negative one. Now we're going to do a small inset. So we'll click on the inset button and we're going to do something like 0. Point, we'll just type in 0. 0.3. Now we can start to create our corkscrew. Press Alt W on the keyboard, or just turn off editable poly. And we're going to go to the Create panel, Shapes, scroll down, and we're going to select the helix. Now in the top viewport, we're just going to draw out a helix. We're not too worried about the radiuses at the moment because we're going to um, set them ourselves in the Modify panel. So we're just going to click once for the first radius, click again for the second radius and we'll just drag this out a little bit for the height. Now we can go over to the modify panel and we can just type in radius 1, we're going to set it 8, radius 2, also we're going to set it 8, the height let's type in something like 120 and in turns we're going to type in 4.5 there we are. Can we see the shape? It's a bit like a spiral. I'm going to maximize the left viewport. I'm going to select the, the helix and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. First of all, I'm going to turn on the rotate tool and then the, snap, the angle snap toggle and rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to move it up slightly and just to the side a little bit. I want to create a straight uh, segment here, right here in the middle. Turn off the angle snap, then we're going to right click on the helix and convert it to an editable spline. Go to vertex mode, now if we just zoom in we can see that the very first vertex is yellow. We're going to grab this vertex and we're going to drag it right over to the cylinder. We're going to straighten it. Very important that this line is straight. Now I'm going to right click on this vertex. Make sure it's set to corner. That's right. And the first vertex on the other side, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to right click and I'm going to set it to Bezier corner. Now I'm going to go to segment mode, select the segment, scroll down under geometry to where it says divide and I'm going to type in 8. I want to divide this into 8 segments so now I'm going to press divide. There we are. We can see it's been uh, separated into 8 segments. This is going to be our corkscrew. All we need to do now is apply a loft but before that we're going to create a circle. So we're just going to zoom in here in the perspective viewport. We'll go to the create panel, shapes, circle. Turn on Auto Grid and right here in the center we're going to start to draw out our circle. Just slightly smaller than the hole that we created before. We'll just click again to turn off the shape creator and then we'll go to Select by Name and we'll choose our circle. Now we can just move it along. We can see it here now in the left viewport. Okay. Now we're going to add a loft, but before that we need to select the helix. 
then we'll go to the Create panel, Geometry, and underneath Standard Primitives, we're going to go to Compound Objects and select Loft. Our helix is going to be the path, so what we need to do now is to get our shape. Let's press Get Shape, and then as we hover over our circle, we can see there's a small icon that's appearing. Let's just click on the circle, and there we are. Now we have our shape. Can we see that? Come over here to Skin Parameters. And in Options, we're going to bring our shape steps down to 1 and the path steps down to 1. I want to taper the end of our corkscrew. So to do that, I'll go to the Modify panel, Deformations, and I'm going to select Scale. Let's have a quick look at the panel. This first point is the yellow vertex that we've seen at the beginning. And at the end is at the very f the, the point here at the end of the helix. We're wanting to taper this last section. So if we go here first to insert corner point, if we insert a point about 80, just here underneath, then we'll go back and select the Move Control Point tool. Let's bring this down. There we are. We've automatically tapered the end. We'll close the panel. Let's right click and convert to an editable panel. We're just going to maximize the viewport. There we are. Can you see that? Now we're just going to move it in. Bring it up a little bit first. And we just want to center it as close as we can to the hole that we created before. Just zoom in. As close as we can. Uh, we might need to bring it over a little bit. We're going to bridge the two objects together. But before we do that, we need to attach them. I'm just going to separate them slightly. There we are. Let's go over to the editable poly panel. We'll scroll down to edit geometry. Choose attach. And now we're going to click onto the centerpiece. Change to polygon mode. We will select the center polygon. Now let's zoom in. Hold the control key down. And we will select the polygon on the corkscrew. We'll go over to Edit Polygons and click on Bridge. There we are. We've just connected the two objects. Let's just have a look. Okay, let's scroll down to Subdivision Surface and we're going to turn on Use NERMS Subdivision. In the display itinerations, we're going to set that to 2. Let's come out of this polygon mode. Just click to turn it off. Click on our cylinder. And we're going to do the same. We'll go to Subdivision Surface. Use NERM Subdivision. And we can leave the itinerations at 1. That's all right. We can go back and select the helix and delete it. In the circle, we don't need them now. All you need to do is add some materials and there we are, you have your corkscrew. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this video useful. Enjoy.